Hello, this is Dr. Weber. Today I'm going to talk about measurements, units, and uncertainties. And this is an introduction to the work that you'll be doing for your first at-home lab for this semester. Now, it's really important for us as scientists to be able to take measurements. That's the way that we can quantify what's happening in our world around us. So we need to understand how to take those measurements, what our measurement devices are telling us, what unit we're using, what is the quantity of the thing, and then each measurement device has uh, a level to or a degree to which it can uh, record measurements within some tolerance level or some uncertainty level, and we need to be able to understand that too. Within physics, we have four fundamental units. We have uh, the meter, which is our fundamental unit of length. We've got the kilogram, which is our fundamental unit of mass. We have time, our fundamental unit of seconds. And then we have another fundamental unit, which we'll get to next semester if you take physics with me. And that's the um, unit of electric current, which we call an ampere. Units haven't always been standardized. <laughs> now, we'll see how it's really important, why it's important for us to have standardized units. But um, in uh, ancient times, familiar objects were used to make human-sized measurements. Historically, the foot that we use here in the United States was part of many local systems of units all over the world, but it varied from country to country, city to city. So the foot that you might use in your country could be different than the standard foot that someone uses in another country. Example uh, is uh, the difference between the foot in England and France. So in the 12th century, King Henry I of England fixed the yard as the distance from his nose to the thumb of his outstretched arm. And if you've ever bought fabric, here in the United States, you know, sometimes if you order fabric by the yard, you'll actually see the person at the store pull out the piece of fabric and they might even just measure the yard by going from their nose to the hand. And I've seen them do that a few times myself. Now the foot in England wasn't always the same as the foot in France, for example. And we know that Napoleon wasn't really actually all that short. So at the time of his death in 1821, he measured five feet two inches in French feet units, but he measured five feet six inches in British foot measurements at that time. Standardized units are important so that we know that we're getting the same amount of a thing no matter where we are in the world. Now standardized units have made it easier to trade and make partnerships between countries through industry all over the world. Um, the standard unit system that we use now is the metric system, and it's based on units of 10. So most sciences are going to be using the metric system for its elegance and simplicity. It's easy to multiply, divide by units of 10, by units of 10, hundreds, thousands, etc. Now, <laughs> however, the United States, Liberia, Myanmar, are the only countries that have not officially adopted the metric system. We still use the imperial system of measurement, but in the sciences, we're still going to be using the metric system for the most part. Now, many of the units we use in physics are called SI units, which stands for an internet, the International System of Units. And so those standard SI units, fundamental SI units for us again, are going to be the meter, kilogram, and second. That's what we're going to think about here for this first semester of our physics class. Okay, now I'm going to talk about that one time when NASA lost a spacecraft because of units. And that spacecraft was called the Mars Climate Orbiter. So in 1999, communication with the spacecraft was lost as it was orbiting or as it went into orbit around Mars. The computer software for the spacecraft produced output in non-SI impulse units um, of a, a, a kind of obscure unit called the pound force second, okay? And what was expected was the SI unit for impulse, which is a Newton second. And we're going to talk about impulse later on in this semester. So the software supplier for the spacecraft 
wrote its software in our US customary units, our sort of imperial based system of units, not the NASA specified SI units. And the difference between those units, uh, what the spacecraft was expecting and what it got from the software uh, caused it to eventually crash into the surface of Mars, okay? And so that's why it's important for us to have a standardized system of units of measurements so that when we're talking to scientists all over the world, we're talking to our other classmates about the measurements that we took, that they know what we mean when we say we took a measurement in 100 centimeters. Their centimeter measurement is gonna be the same as your centimeter measurement. 